Hello folks and thank you for joining us on The Extra Point, your only place for local high school sports and activities. I'm your host Dolly Fonseth and it is a gorgeous day here at Greeley West High School where in just a few moments we'll be chatting with the Greeley West girls softball team. But first, like always, we had some incredible highlights from last week, so why don't we take a look? Let's start off our highlights at Greeley West for some softball action between the Spartans and the Fossil Ridge Sabercats. Things did not start well for the Spartans. The Sabercats put three runs on the board in the top of the first, and then the Sabercats followed that up with six more runs in the top of the second to take an early nine to nothing lead in this game. In the bottom of the second, the Spartans would answer right back. Kaylee Flores gets things going with a single to left. The next batter, Jania Padilla, will reach base on this throwing error, and the Spartans have runners on first and second with no outs. Things looked good for West until this play. A triple play by Fossil Ridge to end the West threat and the inning. Fossil Ridge would put this game away in the top of the third. The Sabercats bust out for nine runs in the inning to increase their lead to 18 to nothing. West would put two runs on the board in the bottom of the third, but it just wasn't enough on this day as Fossil Ridge takes this one 18 to two over Greeley West. The Greeley Central Wildcats heading into the home stretch of the volleyball season and looking for a win over the Broomfield Eagles. The Wildcats came out strong to start this match, taking control of the action right from the get-go. Kelsey Cousins will wind up and drive this ball right down the line for the point. A little later, it's Megan Grafey who comes through with the big score for the Wildcats. The first set was close early, as Central got it done with offense and defense. Taylor Beck gets the block here for the point. This cross-court winner from Marcy Apodaca would make a 6-7 game, with the Wildcats down just a point. but that's when the Eagles would unleash their power game. Broomfield would go on a 13-point run to open a 20-11 lead over the Wildcats. But Central hung tough and went on a run of their own to cut that Broomfield lead down to five and make it an 18-23 game. But that was as close as the Wildcats would get. Broomfield closes out the first game 25-18 to, to go up one set to none over the Wildcats. The Wildcats looked to rebound in the second game. Central used their front line to take control of the game at the net. Kelsey Cousins and Andrea Williams team up here for the block. Central also took charge offensively. Kelsey Cousins will go up high for this one and bring home the point. This match featured several great points. Katie Grafey will finish the play and get the point for Central. The Wildcats trailed 8-14 in Game 2 and were looking to cut into the Broomfield lead. Katie Grafey again comes up big for Central. Broomfield didn't waver when Central made their run. The Eagles held strong and again went to their power game. All in all, just too much offense from the Eagles as they power through this game 25-11 to take the second game and go up two sets to none in this match.
Central needed to play their best in the third set. Down two sets to none, the Wildcats use their non-stop hustle and it pays off for them. The Wildcats never gave up in this match and hung tough all the way. But there would be no big comeback in this match. Central just didn't have an answer for the attacking front line of Broomfield. The Eagles would go on to take the third set, 25 to 12, and Broomfield defeats the Wildcats, three sets to none, to take this match. Moving to action on the gridiron, the Greeley Central Wildcats hosting 4A powerhouse Loveland. We will pick up action in the first quarter, no score in this game, and Loveland on the move. This long run would set up a one-yard touchdown run, and Loveland takes an early 7-0 lead. The Wildcats would answer right back with a big play of their own. Sean Dixon connects with James Desmond, and he takes the ball all the way down to the one-yard line. A couple of plays later, Dixon would take it in himself, and this game is tied at seven apiece. That was just the beginning of the scoring on this night as both teams lit up the scoreboard. And if you want to find out who ends up winning this game, then be sure to tune in to the game of the week every night at 7 p.m. The Loveland Indians versus Greeley Central Wildcats is our game of the week. We hope you enjoyed those highlights. I know I most certainly did. Now folks at home, I know you've got a favorite team and you probably want to see their standings. So why don't we take a look at the standings? But when we come back, we're talking Greeley West girls softball right here on the Extra Point. Welcome back to the show, folks. I'm joined now with the head coach of the Spartan softball team, Coach Don Wagner. Don, thank you so much for taking time to chat yeah. with us today. Yeah, nice to meet you. Absolutely. Thanks for coming out. Absolutely. Well, Coach, why don't you just let us know? I understand you've been a coach for the coach here for over 10 years. 
That's right. Yeah, I was the head coach here for about a decade and took a couple years off and I've come back to it and really excited to be in the program again. It's a great program, nice kids and real happy to be back. Excellent. And when you started, um, I, I understand you took a little bit of a break. So it was 4A when you started and now it's 5A. Tell me, have you changed your coaching philosophy or um, why don't you tell me about what's changed? Yeah, you know, when I left, it was a different league and a lot of uh, a lot smaller schools. Um, 5A, you know, strategy-wise, coaching-wise, it's probably actually promoted or emphasized kind of what we do here even before. We're real aggressive. We, we try to put pressure on other teams. And in 5A, it really seems like learning these new teams, that's what they do too. So I haven't really changed a whole lot of our philosophy. It's actually kind of reinforced what we've done here for years, which is just play good, clean, tough, aggressive softball. So that's really all we've been trying to do even as we learn the teams in this new league. Coach Wagner, I understand you have about two weeks left in the season. Why don't you let everybody know how is it that you're really pushing these girls to finish strong? Well, you know, we've always said this the entire year. It's more about us than the other teams, and we've just been constantly trying to build and improve. We've got such a young team here. Uh, our goal for the last two weeks you know, every team's goal, of course, is to make the playoffs, and we are right on the edge. Uh, right now, we're kind of on the outside looking in, but if we would win out, we could still have an outside shot at qualifying for the postseason. So really, we're just focused on better defense, better pitching, better hitting with runners and scoring. It's just everything that it takes to, to play winning softball at 5A. So just constantly improving in the last 10 days that we have, and hopefully we can qualify for the postseason. Coach Wagner, why don't you tell us a little bit about the makeup of your Spartan softball team? You know, we are extremely young. As I mentioned, we have uh, just three juniors, one senior in the whole program, so it's a lot of freshmen and sophomores. Uh, and they bring a lot of youthful enthusiasm to the game. It's been really fun to be around them. Um, also in experience, learning how to play at the high school level. I mean, a lot of kids have come from summer programs and they have they have played good competition, but I mean, it's different when you're playing girls that are juniors and seniors in high school that are going to college playing softball. And, and I mean, you're 14 and you're pitching to these kids. So it's been great being around them. They're, they they want to learn, you know, everybody wants to get better here. And there's like a sense that we're building something special that, you know, in, in the years to come, it's going to be a team that hopefully can compete for a state title. So that's kind of the atmosphere that's been going on around here this year. Coach Wagner, you have a young team we were just discussing. Um, tell everybody at home, what do you see the future of the Spartans? Why don't you elaborate on that with this new fresh team you have? Sure. Uh, you know, our goals as we build for the future here is to eventually, I mean, like every team, I think, win a state title. You know, we're realistic. 5A, this front range league, is probably the best softball league in the state. Um, we've got state champions in this league, three of them. And so we realize that we, we need to build to get on that level. And so um, our goals really next year will be to improve on this record and get in the top four, which is what you need to do to qualify for, for state in this league. And then eventually, again, as we take these freshmen and sophomores forward, compete for that state title. Hopefully graduate kids also in the end that are going on to college. I mean, that's always been our goal here is to take our upperclassmen that are want to play college athletics, take them to that level and make sure they're ready to compete at that level and be a college level student. So that's kind of our goals is just grow these kids as much as we can. Coach Wagner, it was extremely nice to meet you and thank you so much for taking time out of your practice to chat with us. Oh, it's my pleasure, Dolly. It's great. Come Abs anytime. Absolutely. We will have to do that. Okay. Thanks again. Yep. Also joining us on the show today, folks, is Brittany Corrales, one of the all-star players here on the Spartans softball team. Thank you so much for taking time out of your practice to chat with me today. You're very welcome. Absolutely. <laughs> so you've been playing softball for a long time. Why don't you tell the folks at home how long you've been playing and why you have such a passion for this sport? Well, I've been playing since I was about seven years old back in California. And I just continued playing. I was brought up with it because my family, they're all baseball players and my dad plays and my dad coached. So I just was told that I had a lot of talent, talent in me when I was like, eight, nine, ten years old and I was just stuck with it because I was like maybe I can go to my dream college one day which is UCLA so to get a scholarship there so I thought that that'd be a lot 
of fun. Brittany, that is really exciting. So you have a dream to go to UCLA. So being a student athlete, you really have to balance your academics and your athletics. Tell me, how does Brittany do so? It's really tough because, well, as you get older, as a junior, you have off blocks, so it'll, it's a lot easier than being a freshman and a sophomore. So it kind of helps with off blocks, being able to do your homework in between school and periods and everything. And then it's really hard because then you come home every day at around five o'clock and you're already tired and then you're hungry and then you still have to shower. But it all kind of works out in a way, but you have to really work at it and have a lot of dedication to it and motivation because if you don't, then it's kind of not fun because then you like throw so much talent away or something for something you're really good at and then all of a sudden you're not eligible or you don't have the qualifying Great. GPA or something like right, that. So gonna... it kind of, it's hard, but it's, it'll be worth it in the end. So Brittany, you have two more weeks left, about 10 days or so, um, I think coach had mentioned. Tell me, what is it that you're doing to finish the season off strong, whether it's, you know, um, working on your fundamentals or catching batting. Tell everybody at home what it is that Brittany's doing to finish strong. Well, every day at practice, I've been trying to work hard at what I do, like playing shortstop or getting like basic things, like little things. And then once I get those basic things done, I kind of try and work on the more difficult things that I'm challenged with. Like to say, hey coach, can you hit me some backhands or can you hit these slow rollers to me so I can try and get to them and stuff. And so I try to work like little by little, but Towards the end of the season, you kind of want to finish strong and hard. So I've been working a lot harder than what I was, like, say, the first two days of practice or something like that. And also being, like, one of the players for all the other youngins and underclassmen to look up to, it's always good to work hard at it because then if they see you slacking off, they think they can slack off. And it's always not a good note when you do that because then kind of like nice you job. play how you practice. Mm -hmm. nice so I, I don't want to go out there and have like the whole team not doing good or something like that because they thought that it was okay to do so. That's all right. you can stay in your Brittany, you're one of the leaders on this team, being an upperclassman. Tell everybody what is it that you do to be a lighthouse for your team? Being considered one of the leaders, I try to work hard every single day at practices and try to lead by example. Like if somebody doesn't know how to do something, I am experienced since I've been playing for almost half my life. And so like I know most positions and how to play them. And so if somebody needs help or something, then I'll come to them and be like, okay, this is how you do it or this is how you would do such and such. So it's pretty, it's fun for the most part because you feel like people are looking up to you and you're just, you feel like you're like top notch, like they praise you, but they really don't, but it just feels like that. You kind of just get that really cool feeling. And it's just a lot of fun. And like, even when they're like down on themselves too, I'm kind of go over to them and settle them down. Like, it's okay, stuff happens. Like, nobody's perfect, it's all gonna, like, you just never know. It is what it is. It just happened. It's in the past. You can't really change it. But it's a lot of fun being a leader and knowing that they look up to you, kind of, because, I don't know, it's just fun. <laughs> Brittany, it was an honor to meet you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your practice to chat with us here on The Extra Point. Thank you. You're welcome, and good luck to you on the rest of the season. Thanks. You're welcome. This is Brittany Corrales. I'm Dolly Fonseth. Don't forget, folks, we're going to wrap up the extra point right after this. Welcome back to the show, folks. Don't forget to tune in next week for another exciting edition of the extra point. Folks at home want to know where we're going to be? Well, you'll have to stay tuned and find out. But what I can tell you is where your favorite team's going to be. Let's take a look at the schedule.
Folks at home, I want to remind you how extremely hard these girls work in the classroom so they can come out and compete week in and week out. I want to send a message to all students watching. You guys stay focused, put academics first, and I promise you success is going to follow you absolutely every step of the way. Now folks at home, we want to hear from you at the extra point. That's right, and all you need to do is slide in front of your computer and send us an email. You can send all your emails to bsathy at greeleyschools.org. Again, that's bsathy at greeleyschools.org. Give us some feedback, tell us what you liked about the show, any kind of email we get we're gonna read on air and you'll be a local celebrity for a day so send us those emails and while you're in front of your computer you can check us out on the World Wide Web by going to www.greeleyschools.org again that's www.greeleyschools.org click on the link video and there you'll find us the extra point I'd like to take this time to thank the Spartan softball team for letting us invade their practice today thanks again we really appreciate it and I'd like to thank the man who's in charge of all those great highlights that we saw earlier, George Oberleitner. Great job, George. And the man behind the camera as I speak, Brian Sathy. Thank you so much for your direction week in and week out. And folks at home, I want to copiously thank you for watching. Without your watching, we wouldn't have a show. My name is Dolly Fonseth. Don't forget to tune in next week for another exciting edition of The Extra Point. We'll see you then.